anyone who's obstinate enough not to move their hives needs, needs their parents to spank them. Sometimes people would move their hives, but you're counting on people to be respectful of their neighbors. And we have had an instance where we've asked somebody to move their hive, and they're not. So now what do you do? The other day she cut down all her flowers just to keep the bees out. That's really sad. That's the problem right now, is that these houses are 20 feet wide. 100 feet, you're affecting five families. So it's, it's a serious problem, I, I believe. It's, it has to be addressed. I mean, there's room for the bees in the city, just maybe not one in every household <laughs> on a block. I don't think it's a, like there are too many bees hives in San Francisco. I, I don't think it's the number of hives. I just think that the number that are mismanaged is too high. I, I think bees overall, the population's declining, so. I think that's an important distinction. Yeah, I think the more the merrier, but if they were all healthy and, and well taken care of, I don't think there would be a problem. Mites are an ongoing problem, and different people do different things. I don't treat my bees. I'm hesitant. That stuff smells so bad. It makes me sick. It's going to make my bees sick. <laughs> I know. So maybe my colonies die out sometimes, and that happens because I don't treat. But then I start up a new colony, and people say, oh, that's a poor method of keeping bees. Um, but for the time being, it's, it's the one that I am doing. All of San Francisco is affected by these people that don't control their minds. It's sheer ignorance and um, arrogance a little bit, you know, just saying, I, don't, I know better, I don't need to know this information. And, but there are very credible organic methods to control the disease and keep it way down. All the new beekeepers that have come on to it in the last few years, they, they don't really have the ethical challenge because no one's trained them that way. No one has conveyed that keeping bees is a, it's livestock. It's like having cats or dogs or, you know, a yama in the backyard. It's like, you can't just, you have to, you have to do the research to know how to keep them alive. I think there is always going to be urban beekeepers. Um, the trend of popularity that anybody can get a beehive is, I think, something that will be probably short-lived because it, it takes commitment. You've got to know what you're doing and you've got to be willing to pay attention and take care of them. A lot of the other cities have, you know, uh, good regulations just to keep people protected. You know, whether you're allergic or your property's being damaged or you're getting pooped on, um, it only makes sense. You know, otherwise, Bee City is going to become Bee Poop City. <laughs> support the beekeepers that are around and uh, buy the honey. You know, what I'd really like to do is encourage people to be thinking about a bee-friendly backyard in a bee-friendly city. Planting flowers that are attractive to bees that provide them pollen and nectar. And, uh, you know, being aware that bees are our friend and they're not likely to sting you unless you do something to them. Hello. How are you, sweetie? Hello. Hello. You checking me out? Mm-hmm.